Woodside Bible Church welcomes you to Jingle Jam. Shanna, we're, we're filming. Right now. Right now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I knew that. I knew we were starting right now because I was just in the online chat with all of you uh, chatting it up, uh, obviously. Um, so I'd love it if you'd respond back to me. Um, and tell me all about what your favorite Christmas movies are, uh, who you are, um, and maybe even your favorite Christmas cookies. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, anyways, <laughs> so um, hopefully you're watching this from some point in your home, some, some spot in your living room maybe, I don't know. Yes, I mean, you're watching from home and we're so thankful that you clicked to join us today. We have so many families across Metro Detroit who are right there in their family rooms. And if you're anything like me, I tend to have a special spot in my family. I mean, Shanna, do you have a favorite spot? Oh, of course. You know the spot that's your spot. Yeah. <laughs> and so you watching at home, I'm sure you have a particular family member at home who kind of claims their spot. You know the family member I'm thinking. The one that if you sat in their spot and if they walked in the room, they give you the stink eye. Absolutely. Maybe that you stole their spot. So right now, wherever you're at, you can kind of point or give someone the stink eye of that person in your household who claims their spot. Yeah. But regardless, we hope that you're cozy in your space and you're ready to enjoy Jingle Jam. Jam, key word there. I make a lot of jam. And so in order to make Jingle Jam a success tonight, there's gotta be a few key ingredients to make this a truly delicious jam. What are we gonna need to do or what's going on? I'm so glad you asked, Shanna. We have a bunch of different things that we're gonna need throughout the night. We're gonna be going through the Advent candles. So if you're gonna participate from home and kind of follow along and light the candles throughout the show, you're gonna need five candles at home. I love candles. My favorite one is gingerbread right now. It smells so good. Okay, so you at home, make sure you designate the open flames to an adult in the room. Okay. That's no fun. But you said they need three things. I only heard about one, and it's that kids can't light the candles. So what are the other two things? Is there going to be hot chocolate? Maybe a costume change? Let's do it right now. Oh, you look awesome. What are we? I think we're gingerbread men. My favorite <laughs> Christmas cookie. Not costumes. Please, snap your fingers. Bring us back. Come on, we're so cute. No, one. Two, three. Whew. Okay, much, much better. No, not costumes. Uh, we're playing a game called Light and Who. Love Get games. it? Light and Ho. And Baby Food Mashup. Okay, uh, those sound like interesting games. Uh, what do you need in order to play those games? So glad you asked again. For light and hoop, you're gonna need an unbreakable ornament, something that can be thrown. Fair. So not that family heirloom on the Christmas tree, the Christmas ornament that's been passed down from generation to generation. I'm talking about an unbreakable ornament that can be thrown, maybe even bounced a little bit. And then you need something for it to be thrown into. So maybe a lamp shade upside down, maybe a laundry basket, or maybe even uh, a Swiss engineered toy called the Bilbo Swivel. Bilbo, like Bilbo Baggins? Not quite. It's a sweet invention that you turn it around, it can be a turtle shell, or you can put it on a flat surface and, and spin around. I think you should give it a swirl. I mean, I'll try anything one time. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go! Woo! Okay, not the most graceful moment of my life, but all right. Lots of fun. Shannon, <laughs> that was hilarious. So that's light and hoop. For our second game, the baby food mashup, you're going to need some edible items, maybe something of your favorite from your pantry or a beverage from your refrigerator, and you're going to need a blender. Ah, a blender. <laughs> yeah, okay, so maybe some families don't have a blender. <laughs> kind of like me, it's totally fine. Um, so maybe they just like take a bowl and take their hand and just smash things in there and it's blended enough, I think, to work. Yeah. Well, whatever works for you and for your home, but we're gonna have some fun with it. Well, it sounds like it's gonna be a blast, but there's one thing that I'm really excited to ask you about, and I just have to know if it's real or not. Matt, when I registered online for this event, it said there are going to be 
prizes. Now, is that real? Are we gonna have prizes? I love prizes. Shannon, that was not a typo. There are, are actual prizes. And not just prizes that you could have individually, but prizes that really are meant for your whole family to enjoy together. We have two different prizes for tonight, and these aren't just things to experience by yourself. These are prizes that the whole family can enjoy together. So for the first prize that we're gonna give away tonight, it is a game night package. I love game nights. Not just one game, multiple games that you can play together, and no family game night is complete without some snacks, so we're gonna throw in some snacks for you too. Absolutely. So for your game night package, those of you who are at home, you're just wishing and wondering if it's gonna be you, uh, we're going to have Ticket to Ride Junior, the Animo card package, yep. uh, family charades, and this sweet game called Outbox. You're gonna love it. So for this first prize, will you give me a drum roll at home? Drum roll, please. Randall Clee, so Clee family, you guys are the winners. Congratulations. Woohoo! That was incredible. And for our final gift package tonight for that family at home waiting, we're actually going to send you all around the world oh to my experience gosh. what Christmas treats are like. Wait, in pack my bags. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, I just am getting word we actually can't afford to send a family all around the world. So, next Bex thing, we're going to travel around the world ourselves, package all of those Christmas treats that people celebrate in different countries in one box and send it to someone's house. That's right, this is called Universal Yums. It's a company that takes snacks from around the world and their December box is an extra special one because it's taking those Christmas treats and packaging them. But not just December, we're actually setting up your family with a three month subscription after that. Um, so every month, this Universal Yums send, picks a country and then they send you a box of snacks from that particular country. So when that box arrives, the whole family is gonna be excited. So for this four box extravaganza from around the world, this prize goes to... Carrie Duclo. So the Duclo family, congratulations on winning your prize. Wreath of Glory. Well, those gifts were pretty incredible and a little over the top, but the thing about Jingle Jam is it's pretty simple. Actually, the theme is Simply Christmas. So without much further ado, we're gonna introduce you to some of our friends, Tan and Reginald, who are really gonna kick off Jingle Jam for us. That's right, we're gonna adventure through learning about the Advent. And at the end of our 45 minute experience together, we're gonna to have a worship song led by some of our very own Woodside kids. So make sure to stick around for the whole thing. Well, what are we doing? Let's get this started. Woohoo! Welcome to Jingle Jam, I'm Tan. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Don't laugh at my homemade snowflakes. I did the best I could. Listen, but we've got more to come. I want to celebrate with you and your whole family. And this just seemed like a great way to get things started because you simply cannot have enough Christmas. Am I right? Check this out. It's my Advent wreath because it's Christmas. In fact, this year, we're talking about an adventurous Christmas. You see what I did there? You picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> If you have some candles at home, your family can do this along with us tonight, or just watch now and do your candles in order between now and Christmas. Some of you may like candles like this every year. For some of you, this could be the start of a new tradition. You'll see what I mean as we go along. It takes some patience, which is tough for me at Christmas. I don't like waiting around, do you? But these candles are all about waiting and using the time to prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas. Because this Christmas, I want you to know that there is, don't, bl that is not me. I, wait, I can't take this call right now. Wait, let me try to cancel it. Ooh, Ooh something got brought in. <laughs> oh boy, it's Reginald. And in the spirit of Christmas, I don't think I can hang up on him. Good day, Tan. Good day, fair viewers. My name is Reginald Fastidious III. I am the greatest one-man Shakespearean Bible story reenactor, and I am here so that you may enjoy my presence. 
and know that this Christmas... Yes, that's what I was telling everyone. This Christmas, we can boldly say that there is absolutely... No hope! Thank you! Yes, wait, what? Thank you! Reginald, we are doing a Christmas. And thank you, my dear viewers, thusly. <laughs> Reginald, it's been a tough year, but all hope is not lost. Yes, it is. No. Yes! <gasps> no, it is not. Yes, it is! Oh! I just punched myself in the nose. Reginald, unlike you, I actually believe there is a lot of hope to be had, especially around Christmas. That's not what the Bible says. What are you talking about? Surprise, I've read the Bible, I see. Well, after performing it for 10 years, I finally decided to actually read it. And I was appalled. Oh, there my lip. Oh, behold, I am the bearer of bad tidings during this happy season. Prepare for the worst. Oh, I'm prepared. <laughs> to the performance art piece. Thusly. Um, so I know I said we were going to celebrate Christmas, but I find that when Reginald dials in, it's just best to let him do his thing. In the beginning, God created the universe and all that is in it, including our home, Earth. It is good, but don't get used to it. <laughs> now, God didn't say that last part. Then God created the first human, Adam. But God took one of Adam's ribs ow, to make the first woman, Eve. Ow! I got Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, rib. I got Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, rib. <laughs> However, Adam and Eve broke the only rule God gave them. Oh, delightful! Help! We've fallen and I can't get up! Sin entered the world! and people were separated from God. Huh. Things kept getting worse. God called an old man named Abraham. Yes, Lord. I will have as many children as there are stars in the sky and the heavens. Well, how do you expect me to pay for college? No hope. <laughs> then all of Abraham's descendants were enslaved by the Egyptians. Walk like an Egyptian. Some of this is in the Bible. Some. So God spoke to a man named Moses who apparently wore Abraham's hand-me-downs, but he had a stick through a burning bush and told Moses he would convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God sent terrible plagues like frogs. 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 Eventually, Pharaoh let God's people go. And Moses led them to safety by walking through the Red Sea. But the Israelites disobeyed God and couldn't enter the land God promised them for 40 years. No hope! And then they were ruled by bad kings. <laughs> ah! And the Israelites! We're conquered by the Babylonians! Ah! Hoof, hoof. Everyone, run away! Run for your lives! Ah, no hope for you! Ha, ha, ha! Reginald, Reginald, Reginald! Ha, 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 penguin, ha, ha! Reginald! 
And scene. What? Oh! Thank you! Ah, thank you! Th Reginald, first of all, there are tons of stories you skipped over in the Old Testament that are filled with hope and joy and peace and love. Ha! Now listen, the Bible is an amazing story of God's love for us. Really? Yes, it starts off a mess, but God had a plan to fix it right from the start. Even when things look difficult, God is still working for our good. That's where Christmas comes in. I thought it began in July when all the stores started selling Christmas decorations. Actually, it begins a long time before that, and it starts with this candle. Wait, are we expecting a power outage? <laughs> no, if anything, this candle represents the message of ultimate hope. And that's where we start the Advent wreath. It's a centuries old tradition where people light one candle on each of the four Sundays in December to help them get ready for Christmas and remember what it's all about. Oh, what's happening? Oh, my connection! Mom must be streaming another Hallmark movie. Mom! Mom, I'm trying to stream! Oh no! I think. I think. Well, I hope he's still watching. And all of you families out there, Take a look at this as we get ready to light our first candle. All right. How's it looking? Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, you want to get that? Yeah. Yeah, get that piece right there. Mm -hmm. It's tied up, just like your shoes. <laughs> OK, enough MacGyvering. It's fine. Oh, you know, we just got to get it just right. Just right. OK, get it just right. Get it just right. <laughs> OK. There we go. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. In the beginning, God created everything. He created people and his image to be his friends. And it was good. But then the people God loved so much turned away from him. Sin entered the world and everyone and everything was broken. And for thousands of years, People just kind of did their own thing. Things were looking pretty dark. But from the beginning, God had a plan to rescue his people, to rescue us. And he shared that plan with the prophet Isaiah. Go ahead now. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And that is what hope looks like. Hope looks a little wonky. No, it's, ooh, uh, get it Dad! Can I call 911? <laughs> I think that's all the hope I can handle today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Isaiah knew things weren't going well for most people. He knew they needed to see that God had a bigger plan, that God had promised to send us the greatest repair person of all to fix our broken world. The King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the greatest doctor, God's rescuer, would be all of those things. And this candle, represents that hope. If you lit that candle with me, you want to make sure it's in a safe place because we're going to play a game I call Light and Hoop. You're going to need an unbreakable Christmas ornament and something to throw it in. So I'm going to use this lampshade. I think it's a lot of fun. You could use a lampshade or a bucket, box, trash can, anything. So the oldest person in your family goes first. Take a few steps back from the hoop and then throw the ball into it. If you make it, take a few steps back and try it again. Keep trying until you miss a shot. And then mark how far you got. Then that person can pick the next person to go and see who gets the furthest away to still make a hoop. You can pause the video while we play. I'll be right here to find out who wins. Welcome back. Who won at your house? I won here. <laughs> no, mine, mine didn't get very far at all. I think I just need some competition. Maybe my brother, except he always wins everything. And I admit, 
That makes it tough sometimes. But you know what I realized? Sooner or later, we all face a moment where we don't get what we want. It may be losing a game or not getting a gift you really, really wanted. We all face that. Let's take a look at one family's Christmas journey that looks a little different than they expected this year. here okay but remember no one has heard from God for hundreds of years since Isaiah at least that's what we know about it right and then out of nowhere God sends the angel Gabriel to an ordinary girl named Mary and he says do not be afraid Mary God is very pleased with you you'll become pregnant and give birth to a son you must call him Jesus he will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people and that kingdom will never end. You would have flipped out. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't? <laughs> All right, girls. Can we finish? Okay. So then Mary asks, How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. And Gabriel says, The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child, even though she is old. That's because what God says will always come true. And Mary says, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. She just goes with it? No way. Yeah, I bet she asked way more questions than Luke records here. But somehow, she chooses not to let this crazy, unexpected thing send her into a tailspin. That's what real joy looks like. Wait, I want to do it. On the count of three. One, two, two three. three. You are going to blow those out as soon as we hang up, right? It probably helps with the dirty laundry smell. I'm not going to burn down the dorm, I promise. Okay. <laughs> some fantastic Christmases and I've lived through some Christmas seasons that weren't quite what anyone expected. No matter what the season looks like for you and your family, you can find joy, real joy. I know that doesn't make sense right now, but it's true. Even when things seem like they're never going to be quite right, you can trust that God is working it all out and that he loves you so much he won't leave you in the midst of a mess. So we've lit two candles on our journey toward Christmas, hope and joy. Can you guess what this candle represents as we get closer to Christmas? Take a look. Ropes, yeah. Ropes and hot chocolate. That's what you Oh, good, you did find it. I did, I did. <laughs> it's a little different this year, but you know what? It's gonna be great. It's okay, it'll still be special. Go. All right, story time. Okay. Luke 2. We're going to read about how God gave us baby Jesus. <laughs> In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. And the king's rule meant that everybody had to take a trip back to the place that they came from. So right before Mary was supposed to have her baby, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long, long, long trip to Bethlehem. <laughs> yep, that's right. 
but they didn't have a car like we do. Did they have a plane? <laughs> <laughs> they actually had to ride on a donkey. Whoa. You know, the hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and when they got to Bethlehem, everybody else had come back too. So that means there were no hotels or guest rooms for them. So that means Mary and Joseph had to stay in a place with all the animals. Would you want to sleep next to a sheep? Mm -mm. It'd be bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> all right. Now, while Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large cloths. Then she placed him in a manger. Yeah. God loves us so much that he gave us baby Jesus. That's right. And to celebrate that, we're going to light this special candle to remember how much God loves us. Do you think you can help me? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, there you go. Good job. <laughs> good job. Come here. Your mom's gonna get your sister. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see your sister? <laughs> be gentle, be gentle. There you go. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Babies change things, but the baby we celebrate at Christmas changed everything for everyone everywhere. The love shown by the Son of God, leaving heaven and becoming one of us is more than any of us could imagine. This Christmas, I pray that love is a huge part of everything you do, everything you give, and everything you feel. I think it's time for another game, and I don't care how old you are, you are going to have some fun with this one. See, babies take a ton of care, attention, and even special food. So in honor of those seven pound noisemakers we love so much, we're gonna make our own version of baby food. <coughs> Everyone gets to pick one ingredient. It can be tasty or something else. You can pick an ingredient like chocolate chips, mm, or honey, or crackers, or anything. Everyone in the room gets to choose an item. Then you mix it up in a bowl or blender and everyone, and I mean everyone, has to take a bite. All you need is a mixing bowl or blender, something to stir it with, and your baby food ingredient. Simple, right? So pause the video, and I'll wait to hear how it goes. You can pause this video in three, two, one. So how did it go at your house? I chose yogurt. Mmm, I love yogurt. Yeah, that could be a tricky game if someone wants to pick out pickles or ketchup or something like hot sauce. Ooh, I love hot sauce. At this time of year, you don't always know if something is going to be really great or, well, not so Christmassy. But there is something going on underneath all the busyness and the parties and noise that still leads us to that special time at Christmas. Are you ready to check out our final two candles? Take a look. Mm. Mm. Oh, cocoa. So good. good. Thank you. It is very good. Thank you. <laughs> and the cookies. cookies. Oh, good really too. good. Yeah. You would like those. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've assigned parts. Huh? <laughs> Seriously, Dad? <laughs> Not everything needs to be a grand plan. Uh, oh, looks like I'm up. <sighs> there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa, Dad. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, That's you. Oh, uh, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here's how you'll know I'm telling you the truth. You'll find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. What? 
You can do that with your phone now? It's a new app. Keep going. And the angels were praising God, and they said, May glory be given to God in the highest heavens, and may peace be given to those He is pleased with on earth. May glory be given to God in the highest heavens, and may peace be given to those He is pleased with on earth. <laughs> the angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Peace on earth. With God. With people. Can we do this again? <laughs> Feel good? Yeah. Yeah? All right, let's do this. Just let mom do it. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Thought you wanted to call the fire department. <laughs> it's all right, mom knows what she's doing. Oh yeah, mom got this. <laughs> So, Dad, yeah. how long ago was the first Christmas? Hmm. Well, Jesus was actually born about 2,000 years ago. 2,000? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Christmas wasn't just something that happened a long time ago. I mean, God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue all of us for all time. And because of Jesus, everything will be made right again. We know that we can have hope, joy, peace, and love. <laughs> and when we follow Jesus, God can work through us to bring hope and joy and peace <laughs> and love into the world around us. So mom, what's that candle? Well, that is the Christ candle. We light it on Christmas Eve as a reminder that God kept his promise. But there has never been a greater gift in this world than Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can I light it? Yeah. Let me give you a hand. Yeah. Got it? Oh. Careful. Nice. Wow. This was fun. This was fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a very lovely advent we have here. Good job, Mom. Good. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The final candle on the outside of the Advent wreath stands for peace. Peace in the middle of anything. Peace that can only come from God. And this candle in the center is called the Christ candle. It stands for Jesus Christ, who has come to save us all, to give us hope, joy, peace, and love. Christmas is so many things to so many different people. So bringing those beautiful things to people for all times, for all places, all cultures, should look a little different. Christmas is only possible because our journey always takes us to this candle in the middle, the one that represents what Christmas is all about, God's Son. This candle shines so bright in our lives that it helps put everything else in the right light. That is the greatest gift ever. It was the first gift of Christmas, and it will be the greatest gift for every one of us forever. Thanks for going through the Advent wreath with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Christmas is all about God's Son and the whole Bible. Well, it builds into God's glorious rescue plan. When the time was right, God fulfilled his promises and sent his one and only Son, Jesus, into the world. Emmanuel, Jesus is with us. Mary and Joseph, they named their baby Jesus, which means the one who saves. 
Jesus lived a perfect life. He grew and he taught of God's kingdom. And when the time was right, he died on the cross, a sacrifice for me and for you. But he didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave. His glorious rescue plan is for you, is for me. If you know this verse, would you say it along with me? It's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. If you're searching for hope, love, joy, or peace this Christmas, find it in Jesus. Perhaps you're listening today and you've never responded to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, I pray that today would be the day. Maybe one of the kids in the home or the whole household has been searching for hope. Well, it can be found in Jesus. If we respond to the gospel through prayer, confessing our sins to him, we can place our faith and trust in the God of the universe. If you type connect into the chat box, there's a team of people there. We'd love to connect with you. Or if you go to our website and follow the prompts through kids and students and through the kids tile, it brings you to an amazing resource called The Gospel God's Plan for Me. It's packed with scripture that explains the good news of Jesus. And it even includes a prayer, a prayer of response. Well, I trust that you have had a special time gathering with your family tonight, but we're not finished yet. We're gonna get off the couch, we're gonna make some room for ourselves in the room, and we're gonna praise God through a great song called The Greatest Gift. Here we go.
Hey friends, Pastor Chris here. Hey, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for inviting us into your home. I hope you have had an absolute blast tonight. Jingle Jam is an amazing event and I hope that you have laughed and enjoyed your time just having fun together, but most importantly, learning more about Jesus. Advent season is all about the love of Christ. As it's been said before, Jesus is truly the reason for the season. And for some of us, tonight is about to get even more incredible because maybe your son, your daughter, your child has communicated a desire to learn more about the salvation and is found in Christ alone. And you get a chance to share more about Jesus and pray with them. Just know that the Brooks family is celebrating with you. It's been such a joy to be with you in your home, but I also want to invite you into our church home. You know, Christmas Eve is right around the corner and I don't know what your plans are, but I will tell you there is no better place to be than at Woodside on Christmas Eve. We have four incredible services and I want to invite you to be with us either at 2 or 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. or 11 p.m. You pick your service, but make sure you're here to express your love for all that God has done for you, keeping you through 2020 and the special gift he's given us in Jesus and to be able to join in with other uh, believers in Jesus in just worshiping him. So please be with us on Christmas Eve. Just know that we love you. We love your family. And again, I hope you've had a great night. I can't wait to see you soon here at Woodside. God bless and have a great evening.